that's a freaking great question from uh, one of our subscribers on YouTube. Uh, I'm not going to even try to <laughs> pronounce the name, but uh, here's the question. Is it possible to trademark a graphical logo of a descriptive unregisterable text as long as the graphics are unique? That's a great question. My name is Andre Minkoff. I'm the founder of Trademark Factory. And uh, on this channel, I've answered hundreds of questions just like this one. And uh, make sure you check them out. But here's my answer to this one. So if we go by this setup, so we got the descriptive unregisterable name, unregisterable because it's descriptive, uh, and we got a unique set of graphics that go with that. Uh, the answer to that is probably yes, it is trademarkable. Um, there are, of course, a few qualifications that I have to make, and I want to expand on this a little bit uh, just to make sure everyone understands. So first of all, it's not descriptiveness that makes the mark unregisterable. It's that the mark is merely descriptive or clearly descriptive in different uh, countries. They either use the word merely or clearly or, or, or a synonym to that. And the point of that is that uh, there has to be nothing else other than the descriptiveness uh, to the mark uh, that the applicant is trying to own, right? So the reason they don't allow descriptive trademarks to be registered, or in the US, in case of US, they don't allow it to be registered on the principal register is the concern that by trying to get a trademark on a descriptive term, they would own the feature, they would own the characteristic rather than uh, something that allows the market to tell their products and service from identical or similar products of everyone else, even if those other products or services have the same feature, have the same characteristic, have the same uh, benefit. And um, because again, the, the function of a trademark is not to help you monopolize the product is not to help you monopolize a certain feature that's valuable about your product it's to allow you to stand out it's to allow you to own the identity that allows your target market to tell your products and services apart from everyone else's if you can show that your brand does that that it allows your potential customers tell you your products from everyone else's, that's a registrable trademark. That's why there are many ways, well not many, there are a few ways to get around the uh, descriptiveness objection. The first one is when you say, well, it may a little bit, kind of, sort of describe, but not really. It's a suggestive mark, you say, and there's a very ambiguous uh, borderline between the two, right? So at some point, descriptive marks become suggestive. Suggestive marks are registrable, descriptive marks are not registrable. And Trademark Factory, our company, is a perfect example for that because in some countries, we didn't have any objections and the trademarks office saw that yes, it's a suggestive mark because nobody in their right mind thinks that we manufacture trademarks, right? So it was considered a suggestive mark that was registrable. We got it in uh, Canada, we got it in the US, we got it in Europe, we got it in Russia, we got it in Mexico, in a lot of countries. Having said that, we did have a few refusals or initial refusals in some other countries where they thought that the mark was clearly descriptive. So, like I said, it's the fine line. The other way to overcome descriptiveness objection is to say, hey, 
it's not clearly descriptive. There are many potential meanings to the name. There are many potential ways that people will perceive that brand. And if you can show that it's not clearly descriptive, that there's something other than uh, the, the, uh, the purpose of describing a feature of characteristic of your products and services, that's also a way to overcome the descriptiveness objection. Uh, furthermore, uh, if you can show evidence that because of your extensive use of that name, a lot of people have come to uh, see that name not as the reference to the generic feature, but specifically as the source of your products and services, that's another way to overcome the uh, descriptiveness objection. So if you have a unique graphic that, um, that uh, accompanies the descriptive name, that's a way to say, hey, it's not clearly descriptive. There's more, right? It's not merely descriptive. It's not just to describe the feature. There's something unique to it, and this is what we want. Uh, having said that, it's possible, uh, and actually that's what often happens, is that you would be required to disclaim the descriptive name from your mark. So your mark will be protected as a whole, so the graphic with the name, that's protected, but you would not be granted protection in uh, respect of the just the word mark of the literal part of that brand because that's descriptive. So you might be required to disclaim that aside from the mark as a whole. Uh, and um, that's, that's probably what's gonna happen in this situation. Now, the one uh, exception that I have to make is uh, generic marks. So the difference between generic and descriptive is that generic marks, they go not to the function, not to the feature, not to the characteristic, they go straight to the name of the type of the product or services. So for example, if you're selling laptops, right, you can't trademark the word laptop and uh, because that's what it is. And so if you're selling pencils, you can't trademark the word pencil by itself. So, uh, and with generic marks, you can't show that, uh, you can't show acquired distinctiveness is when you provide that evidence that a lot of people have come to know you under that brand. So that doesn't work for generic marks. Now, can you use a distinctive, unique image to get uh, a trademark on a generic name? That's, that's an interesting question as well. So, maybe. Same way, maybe it's harder. You would definitely be required to disclaim the name. Uh, and really it all boils down to the overall impression. When somebody looks at your brand, what do they see? Do they see a generic term? Do they see the descriptive term? Or do they see the image that has uh, the, the name on it? Right, so for example, just going back to pencils, let's say you came up with some really innovative design. I don't know, maybe you got a butterfly or you got uh, a, a, I don't know, a refrigerator written on it, uh, drawn on it, or you've got some, some super interesting pattern. And then in small print somewhere it says pencils. That's okay. Uh, on the other hand, if you got just aerial type word that says pencils uh, and around it you got a little leaf or a <laughs> flower uh, that's that's not gonna fly probably so again use your common sense figure out what's the dominant part of the mark see if you can disclaim the generic or descriptive element and if yes chances are you'll probably be able to get that registered if not uh, if, if the dominant part is the word that's descriptive or that's generic, you're probably gonna be out of luck. Now, I hope this answers your question. I hope you found this helpful. Make sure you like this video, comment below with your feedback, with your questions that you want me to answer in future videos, and make sure you subscribe to get notified whenever the next one goes live. And until then, I'll see you 
in the next video. <laughs>